much has been made about dense breast tissue. How big an issue is dense breast tissue in? Dense breast tissue is actually fairly common. About 40% of all women have dense, dense breast tissue. Um, it's slightly more prevalent in younger women, where maybe about 50% of women have dense breast tissue, and in postmenopausal women, um, about 30% of women have dense breast tissue. So we see it all the time on the mammogram, and that's how we diagnose it. We see a lot of dense fibroglandular tissue on the mammogram, which is white, as opposed to a background of fat on the mammogram, which is black. And it can be a problem because cancers are white spots on the mammogram. And so when you're looking for a small cancer in a background of that dense white fibroglandular tissue, it can be harder to see as opposed to looking for a cancer in a background of fatty, dark tissue. Looking for a cancer in dense breast tissue is sort of like looking for a polar bear in the snow. It can be very challenging. Um, so it's difficult, and it reduces the accuracy of the mammogram, the sensitivity of the mammograms in general. And women with dense breast tissue um, is about maybe 50%, meaning that half of the time if there's a cancer there, we could be missing it, as opposed to the accuracy or sensitivity of a mammogram in a woman with fatty dense, uh, with fatty tissue. There, the uh, the uh, sensitivity is higher in the range of over 90 percent, so it's much more accurate. So, how has the new rules that says you know you, you need to use ultrasounds and all this? How have these new rules helped you to more accurately diagnose these young women who might have? Um, breast cancer in their dense breast tissue? Well, we can use the ultrasound as a secondary or supplemental screening tool in women who have had a normal mammogram. And this includes not only young women, but older women as well. Anybody with dense breast tissue um, in Connecticut now, because of the law that was passed um, in 2009, um, are eligible for the dense breast ultrasound, um, as we call it in our department. Um, so we use it after they have a normal mammogram, and we can pick up some additional cancers that are not seen on the mammogram in the order of about three to five per thousand. So for every thousand um, screening ultrasounds we do, we will pick up about three to five cancers. And that seems really low, but that's actually really comparable to mammography, which has a cancer detection rate of about two to eight per thousand. So it's right in that ballpark there with screening mammography. The downside of the screening ultrasound, though, is that there are a lot of uh, false positives. And so it can cause women to go on for additional testing, perhaps a biopsy, when in fact they didn't have anything wrong with them. So that's the downside of it. Oh, I see. Now, um, for either of you, have you found, though, among those three to five percent more that you're seeing, or three to five more people, uh, are they, do they tend to be younger? And when you do diagnose them, are you getting good results? Um, in our experience at Yale during our first year, we did collect the data. And all of our three cancers were, in fact, in postmenopausal women. And I think it might have just been a, um, a sampling um, phenomena where we only had three cancers out of 1,000. We only did just under 1,000 uh, screening breast ultrasounds in that first year, and that's the only data we have. But other studies have shown that um, these cancers can be picked up in young women and older women. Remember that older women can have dense breasts, and older women are also at increased risk compared to younger women for cancer. So there's a higher prevalence of cancer in, younger, in, in older women. So it's not surprising that we would see these cancers in older women as well. But these cancers are all very small. They're less than one centimeter. They have um, their early stage cancers with a good prognosis. And that's the benefit of the screening breast ultrasound in addition to the mammogram. OK. Now, um, we, we have also learned a lot about what is called microcalcifications. And are these microcalcifications more likely to be found in pe women with dense breast tissue or no? Well, microcalcifications are also something that we detect on the mammogram. And microcalcifications are actually very common um, in all women. And they're most often benign, but occasionally they can be an early sign of breast cancer. Um, I think calcifications are present in women whether they have fatty breasts or dense breasts. But the problem is, is that in dense breasts, they can be harder to detect because calcifications are little white spots. And again, in that background of dense glandular tissue, it can be more challenging to detect.